everyone, everyone. Welcome to the Dr. Music Podcast once again. And I am on the road this time. This is a special edition. I am here at the Forge in Joliet, Illinois. You know, I'm here for Visions of Atlantis. Um, we got a new record coming out. Uh, Pirates. It's Pirates 2. Uh, Armada. Uh, first Pirates to kind of change things up a little bit. Uh, it was kind of a revolution for the band. Um, this one, is it a continuation of the last one? Did you change things up? Did you have the same producer? How does it work on the new record? So, um, I think as the, as the title says, it's Pirates 2, so if people want to assume a continuity, they're right to do so. There is definitely a continuity from wherever we were left at with, with Pirates. And since we were so happy with how everything worked for the first one, we decided to keep the same team and do it again. So we kept the same producer, the same orchestrator, and we still mastered and mixed it with the opponents and so production-wise um, and music-wise, there is continuity and consistency with the previous record. However, there are some massive evolutions. Um, already in the sound, um, which we guitars, we wrote heavier parts, darker parts. Um, there are also a couple of tracks that are a brand new feeling, a brand new vibe in the visions of the Venice world. So, I don't want to say too much because uh, I want people to have their own feeling about it, but it's definitely continuity yet with, a, with an evolution um, to, to the producer. Yeah, um, and it was a great record, and I was, I was hoping to hear more of that record. And, uh, you know, here we go. Um, you guys are on the last couple of dates of the North American tour. Uh, you got a big summer. European festival schedule. Um, after that, uh, are you taking time for yourself? Uh, do you have more? You know, I know that can be difficult. <laughs> and, and taking time for ourselves. What does this mean? And Claudia's a new house and a new home in Italy, right? Uh, so yeah. Um, after that, uh, after the festival, you know, where you're. Uh, Right after, like the last festival is on the 7th of September, and right after we have our big pedal tour in, uh, in Europe, which is called the Armada Tour. Yeah. We are actually, we are not even introducing it as a tour, but as a cinematic live experience, which is peculiar because uh, we are trying more and more to make the show an actual show, not only a concert. You know, with concert, I mean when the band goes on stage plays its song and develops. And this is what I call a concert. When I say a show, I assume that there are things happening, that there are moments. It goes a bit closer to the musical side rather than on the show, to the, to the rock show. And this is, of course, we are not putting on a musical. That's, that's, it would, would be a dream, it would be a dream. But yeah, it's, it's, it would be also too much. So we are staying in between concert and uh, a show, a uh, musical show. And that's why we're promoting it as a cinematic live experience. And it's going to be 33 shows all over all over uh, Europe, basically. Actually, I don't want to offend anyone, so it's mainly Central Europe. Yeah. It's like, yes. yeah. this time, and we miss the really Eastern uh, European countries and the mountains. Yeah. But, but normally, unfortunately for routine reasons, otherwise it would last three months. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. this, th these countries are a bit more difficult to, to reach. So, and, yeah. you know, Europe is so accepting of and so embracing to this music. Uh, yeah. It's really, really wonderful to see. Oh. Just in the acoustic set, uh, for fans with smiles all over, uh, it was great. It's really great. You guys have a lot of fun doing that. Do you ever think about doing an acoustic record? So, <laughs> so this question is even more accurate these days as we had a we had an issue uh, when we played Meza at the Nile Theater for some reason our entire system couldn't support the show anymore. The real show. So we were like, all right, what do we do? We're like, okay, let's go acoustic. And we brought the gear back from the trailer, the piano and the cajon and all and we sat down and we played for like half an hour the remaining time that we had on stage. We played our songs and I could stick. Because 
It's the cancel your show. The way I see that play something we can give the fans. And we're trained to play it acoustic because we do it every day for the meeting read. So it felt like just doing it again. And after that, like the people loved it, they loved them. We still gave them something. But you couldn't perform a real show. And then afterwards, we got so many messages of people being like, Damn, you guys now need to pull out that acoustic record. And, um, you know, we've, yeah. did, we've done a couple of live records, and we've done orchestral versions of our, of, our, of our music. Maybe the acoustic is the next step. We're, we're considering it. We just yeah. need to find a time to record it nicely, <laughs> arrange the songs nicely. So that They're not it. But we would love that too. But they're revealing your time uh, to yourself, right? That, yeah. that thing you don't know about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it was great to watch. I mean, the, the, your music is it's orchestral. It's big. It's grand. It's, it's over the top a lot of times. I uh, love that. But stripping it down and doing the acoustic, it's just as effective. It's more. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just got to... Uh, but I think it's because yeah. of the very basic, basic ideas of songs is good, you know? Like, some people might like just write music and layers of things happening and effects and all, but if a song works at first, on the voice of the voice of the guitar, and if, and if as a word, it's like, like the way he writes songs, it's, mm -hmm. it's like this, it's on, on his own, like, just the vocals, and then he puts on board either with the piano or with the guitar, and it works immediately. And if that is what you get when you start writing and you know, okay, this already works, you know that the moment you put all the orchestras, it just gets bigger. Right. But it doesn't make it a better song. Yeah, the song is at its yeah. core. It's so that. that's why I think yeah. a lot of people can see an acoustic version of our music, a stripped down version, because it doesn't take anything away from the value of the song itself. So very, that's very what true. Really yeah, very, very true. It's great. Um, Nick, I have did one of the, my favorite albums a couple of years ago, uh, She Was. Oh, oh wow. I absolutely love that. Oh, you know, that'd be bold. Uh, Angela's been on, on, on the show, uh, and she's just a great, great lady. She's just wonderful. Um, but, you know, that whole record, there's no production on it. It was just, it was great. Um, so, you know, the writing and, and your production and everything, it, it plays into Atlantis, obviously. Um, what is the writing process for you guys? Um, do you bring it all in? For vision, for sure. No, no, for, for visions. visions. For visions. Yeah, for visions. So, it evolves. <laughs> I would say that it evolves. Um, because to be super fair, uh, when I when I joined the band, of course I was the last person in the, in, in the engine, like the last wheel uh, in the engine, and fairly enough, we got to know each other. We got to discover how to work with each other. We were basically strangers when I, when I joined the band. That was 18, right? 18, 18. And from my personal point of view, it felt like, of course, jumping in what it was already started, and it felt like I was singing covers. Because that's pretty much you know how every singer would feel like when the creation is missing, the creation behind it. Was missing. Then, the more we got together, the more beautiful family formed. Because this is what we are. We are two young brothers. When one is in pain, the other is going to support you. We got most of together. We, we can't wait to. We are always constantly looking forward to meeting each other. And this brought a form of emotion and a form of connection that was completely missing before. And I believe that the growth of music this in the last six years, two especially in the last six years, is, uh, has developed itself because of this connection. Because we truly are a band. Like, I have this vibe of my little self uh, in the rehearsal room when I was a teen, and now it happens again. And it's, and it's fantastic. And also trust and faith in each other group, uh, you know, uh, group, group step by step, yeah. you know, with, with, year, with the years together. You know? And in Wanderers, I had a chance to write two songs. In Pirates, I had a chance to write six songs, seven songs. And now the entire record is being composed by uh, Major Suli, except for uh, a couple of songs that are co composed. Or, uh, for instance, The Land of the Free, which is born from uh, an idea of Fleming, or Pirates Will Return, which is completely worked by the 
Tammy, also uh, Hilly Scars uh, in Pirates was more with the Brunetti of Tammy. So, like, there is this, first of all, the two of us, uh, my musical ideas, her lyrics, her universe, her visual world, transposed and lyrics, because Tammy writes hundreds of the lyrics and music like this. And I can probably say that I, I wrote 100% of the actual. 98, 95% yeah. of, the, of the actual of the actual record. Um, of course, this is where it starts. Then we have uh, the first uh, edits that come from uh, Tammy and I when I make I make a listen to the songs, and maybe she's like, hey, maybe we can change this now, we can adjust this, maybe this could be better if we if we tweak it a bit, and we collaborate into, into, into this. And then once the song is done on our end. We pass everything to the producer, which tells us this is shit we can do. <laughs> 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 no. uh, we give it to the producer, we scramble it a bit to right. make it uh, final as it can be. That's great. Now, I know you're very into that pirate. I know you love that. I've heard you say that uh, all the pirate movies and things like that. You really like that. Even as a kid, dressed up like Yes. Uh, you know, so this is really what Clemmy's writing the lyrics, uh, which is, you know, it's right on board with, it works really well. Um, you know, that's, I, I expected that you would have written the lyrics, you know, uh, being in the pirate theme, so uh, it's great. I see the video for Armada, and Clemmy, I know you started as, when you were younger as a dancer, um, you really love to act as well. Um, I just watch those videos, and does this satisfy that acting craving a little bit? I mean, it's it's really it's very uh, it's, it's visual. It's it's uh, your character. Uh, and that's really fun to watch, and uh, it's got to be fun for somebody who loves to act to to do that. Uh, does, does it satisfy that the acting part for you? Yeah. I I have to say, I, I'm, I'm writing the scripts for our videos mm -hmm. and uh, taking it to an account play that we can, we can act, we can bring in uh, that aspect out on, on those videos. And of course, I absolutely enjoy um, serving the, the, the message of the song in a bigger way by acting myself out. Um, it's just frustrating because those videos should be last like one or two. One or two days, right? Right. <laughs> so it's um, so yeah. But these days we feel more like I feel more like an actress than a singer. Like, it's a bit of both, and, and you know, art is doesn't have borders. I mean, you want to create, you create your body, you create your hands, you create your voice, you create. So to me, it's one big world of, of creation. Yeah, it, and it's it is so artistic to watch. So artistic to listen to. Uh, it's very very satisfying in all those ways. Uh, meet you're part of Temperance. Um, Symphonic metal band, uh, and fun woman singer, uh, another great singer that you know, very similar, a lot of similarities. Um, how? What are the differences for you? How do you, you know, how when you're writing, you know, how's the, what goes in the visions pile and what goes in the template? Well, credit goes to Marco for the writing of Temperance. By not that involved, I wrote a couple songs because Temperance is. <laughs> His baby. He is the founding member. I also joined Temperance in 2018. A couple of months before me. <laughs> that was a busy year. Maybe 2018 was like a revolution year. Yeah, it's a, a turning point, absolutely. Um, but yeah, uh, credit goes to Marco for what he's doing this writing of, uh, of Temperance. So for me, there is a little bit of a different kind of connection. Even if after so many years together, I, of course, feel like I belong there, I even have a we have two of them brands over there, so yeah. it's, uh, you know, it's, it's part of me on, on almost every level. Uh, but, but, I believe that there is a big difference between Visions and uh, Temperance when it comes to the sound, as Temperance truly really are more modern and more melodic. Symphonic metal expressed in the way that Visions of Atlantis uh, do is, I, I mean, classic, but classic doesn't mean that. Classic doesn't mean it's not like it's not a degrading work. 
You know, when you talk about classic music, you think of the big composers. You know, it's, and we with symphonic metal, uh, with, with with Vision of Atlantis, we are trying to uh, exploit everything that has not been done, bringing modernity to a genre that is pretty classic, or at least it has established itself. Because of course, in the year 2000, it was something completely new. Now, if you think of symphonic metal, you know what's going to happen. Still, with Visions, we are bringing fresh air, especially in a moment, in an historical moment, in which there is not really any other band that is doing it anymore, as with a classic, how to say, a pillars of, of symphonic metal. Yeah. Especially in this moment, no offense, and it's absolutely not a criticism, Nightwish are going their own way, like human nature is not even a symphonic metal record, in my opinion. You know, it's, it's something completely different from what they did with Wishmaster with once and, oh, yeah. and, and, and back in the days. And nowadays, if you think of symphonic metal, even Epica, you know, with the growls and with the heavy riffing, they are detaching a bit for, from what symphonic metal was back in the days. They are getting more and more uh, personal in their own way, and it feels to us, at least, that someone that does that style as it was classically conceived is missing and we are, are trying to do our best to keep it up because we believe that it's something valuable, that it's something strong. You know? Of course we bring the pirate, the pirate universe into it and it's not like we are not getting into heavy riffing or modern or modern breakdowns. It's not like we are not uh, following, you know, that we are attached to something that is in the past. But this is what we're doing here. Uh, we temperance the the wave is way more modern. We have synths, we have uh, big uh, seven-string breakdowns and heavy riffing which don't truly really belong to this to the symphony of the job. Yeah. At least in our vision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, yeah, there is a, 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 and those are the differences and we hear them for sure. Uh, this band has been in existence for about 24 years. Uh, <laughs> uh, Thomas, you're a drummer. Uh, Still here, uh, you know, from the beginning. Um, I think about the set list for you guys. Uh, it's coming uh, 2013, right? Um, do you, well, you know, we're about you're about to rock the crowd out there. You know, you got a set list here. Does it go? Do you, do you go back to those records that you were, well, both of you weren't a part of? Uh, really, most of the band, other than Thomas, wasn't a part of. Um, how's the set list work and, and who decides on the songs and you know, how do you put that together? It's got to be different. Well, yes and no, because <laughs> as Meek said, when you join the band, um, like singing the songs from Deep in the Dark felt like, like he was part of a cover band somehow. I felt exactly the same when I joined in 2013. The first shows we did, I was singing the old material and it didn't feel personal. And so for us, now the band, the band members were fixed since, since six years now. We have the sensation that the band has kind of been born since 2018. And because also of our decision to, to go fully into the pirate universe, which I wanted to already by, by 2013, we, it's in, we have so many songs already to pick from the last three records and now also with fourth one that is coming out, Carmada. So we kind of all agreed that it's difficult to have any of these very old songs fit this entire new era of the band. And we also feel not musically or emotionally connected too much. That repertoire, which none of us in the songwriting process have been a part of. It's someone's work. It's a different era of the band. We respect that. We, we've been playing some, some songs like New Dawn until the very last headline tour. Delta, for instance. Um, but I think now we want to focus on the music we do now and focus on the music we're going to do later. And right. fans are more acquainted with all this material as well. Right. So yeah. we want to yeah, showcase totally ourselves right. in the way that we feel is the most personal because this is, first of all, something we need to enjoy. We need to feel connected to. You know, you know you're on stage with your own emotions that you get there. It's the message you want to, to transmit. And when you write your own lyrics, you want to because you want to share that with you. Yeah, so. yeah, and we wouldn't want you to not put your heart and soul into it, you yeah. know? And 
That's uh, easier to do with the material that you've crafted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. We appreciate but that. But that doesn't take any yeah. anything away from the value that's been done for. Sure. And, and sure. we appreciate the fans that still listen to that and still ask for the songs and all. And right. and right now, today is not a headline show. We're playing out, so we can all can all have an extended extended right. set list. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just not us. Yeah, it's not us. Right. Right. Now we are presenting ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. That's totally understandable. Uh, tell me you're about it. You're thinking about a solo rap on Patreon. Uh, so you have a wonderful Patreon. I recommend that to everybody. Uh, it's just, you know, it's so personal and it shares so much and it's just, it's really wonderful. Um, we're talking about a solo record. Uh, that's been talked about for, for a while. Um, how far is it and what could we expect? You know, is it going to be, you know, uh, the hip hop uh, Clementine? <laughs> uh, you know, I doubt it, right? Well, uh, you know, you know, right. You know. Uh, do, do you have a plan? Um, is it plan, uh, not exactly. Uh, because as you said, um, first of all, we come back from this tour, we have to, have to move out uh, to a completely new place, and which will, like, Enable to like really settle and have a nice creative space where, where we could move on with, with that project, and and also finding the time is also a struggle sometimes. But my idea would be to first like, keep releasing the solo songs on like your own account, which I've been doing so far. It's only one song out out there. And music-wise, it's it's more personal. It's more a great probably more in, in a more modern approach. Um, because I've, I've loved many different genres of music and I don't want to necessarily continue to just put myself in a box. Maybe I want to just be free because Visions has its own settings and maybe I want to just experience something else, like different arrangements, different beats, different, why not, different kind of singing, why not? Well, that's what I figured, you know, you're doing a solo record, you would step away from what you usually do. Yeah, otherwise it doesn't make much sense. Right, right. Any, uh... Michele Bottoli solo record? <laughs> well, you know, with, with all the projects that I that I've been in the last years, right now, you know, I finally found a fantastic way of expressing myself with visions, and as as it is today, I feel it's fine. I feel really satisfied. I don't feel awesome. the need of doing more. I have so many ideas <laughs> that I want, but I have no idea how much I'm willing to go home and think some writing like while, while we are here there are, are, are already three songs for the next uh, yeah he's already writing Paris you know for the next like Paris 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 Paris. <laughs> and I have so much it's more in, right. in my mind I, I need to push it out so yeah it, 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 it feels like <laughs> it's a problem you know for me like I have so much to say I feel like I have so much to put down and I don't have the time to sit in front of the computer and, and write it, which is good because it means that I can make a selection. The more it counts, yeah, yeah, yeah. the more it's likely that I will, you know, to select something for something more qualitative. But at the yeah. same time, if I would start thinking of, of a, a solo project, like when? Yeah, that, like, it's when, a good problem to have. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not that's a problem to have. Not it's bad. Not to have. But, but, yeah. I guess she, she will. Yeah. We are working the second. Are yeah, yeah. yeah, we are working the second. The songs, like, the songs are written, everything is ready. We basically are waiting for the actual time to record everything because I'm on the road, Mark is on the road. Angel is super busy with uh, the with guitar lesson. Uh, and yeah, now I also exposed the light that we just supposed to do with masks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, that's a great visual as well. <laughs> Um, we'll wrap it up, and I know you guys are ready to hit the stage, and uh, I can't wait to, uh, to see it, to photograph it, uh, we'll have some photographs of the show. Um, is there anything that, in your life, um, I know you're, you're living your dream um, here, doing this, and this is what you love to do, but as a kid, um, you know, I always wanted to go to Las Vegas for a time. Uh, still haven't done that. I've been around, you know, around the world, really, but haven't done that. So, you know, do you have something like that where you always dreamed of doing it as a kid uh, that you haven't done yet? I have it. Australia and Japan. To play there. To play there? Not to go. Or just to go. Well, I mean, I would. the dream would be to play there. Yeah. The dream would be to play there. 
even just visiting those countries, you know, like, uh, it, it, it's, we, we love traveling as musicians, you know, it's, uh, you wouldn't do this job if you didn't like to. <laughs> That's for sure. It's absolutely <laughs> impossible. <laughs> and I miss that continent completely. And uh, even Asia, I, it's not like I just eat so much. You know? yeah. So I would truly love to, you know, you grow. When you, when you meet another culture, when you leave a bit of another culture, you grow as a person. Yeah, I miss that. I miss that part. I mean, my daughter just went to uh, Africa and uh, she came back a different person. Uh, she's a nurse. Uh, so it really, it's great to look outside over your backyard fence uh, and, and see how the other half lives. Yeah. And, you know, it really opens you up uh, as a person. Uh, yeah, as it's a bit in line with what we said, there are parts of the world that we love to see, um, to visit. Um, I'm more attracted to uh, well, Indonesia, so, yeah. um, I really want to, to um, maybe because also like I know I have roots, very origins in New Caledonia, but I mean, this is more Oceania than Indonesia, but it's, right. this entire part of the world is so exotic and so so appealing that I just at least as a tourist want to. Want to see it? Visit it. India as well. For the whole Buddhist mindset and culture. Excellent, excellent. While we're going to let you go, we're going to let you get ready for your show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this has been great. And uh, my door is always open. You're always welcome to come back and we'll chat some more uh, about Pirate Street. It's on its way. <laughs> we will see each other earlier, I think, because Armada has a headline. A tour didn't come to the US yet, right? Mm. So I think we should work on this first before I was Yeah. Just as a teaser. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Thank you, very much. All right. Thank, you. Thank you everyone for watching. It's Dr. Music Podcast on All Music Magazine. Take care. <laughs>